Hi hello and welcome to Dr Ashwin Dental Info. In this video we will be mainly focusing on how to study for long hours precisely for NEET MDS examinations and this this video is applicable for almost every competitive examination where you have to spend a lot of time reading and learning stuff. So let's start. Let's give the basic study time as 8 hours or 9 hours. So the first thing we need to do is that as i have told in the previous video the part 1 uh you must split your 8 hours as chunks uh, either as 3 hours or 2 hours or 1 hour i am sure there are a lot of videos on youtube which suggest you to uh, suggest you to read long hours and how to implement them even i was the one who has kept watching those videos and i have tried many of them uh, maybe even 50 of them 50 60 of them and i have found ways which actually work for me and i am here to share my po- my points with you so the first thing i did was i planned my breaks you don't plan when you are going to study you must plan at what time you need a break uh, and what do you do in those breaks will matter uh, matter very much because if you are going to read for 2 hours you are going to take a break for 1 hour you start watching a movie and most of the movies will run for around 3 hours and at the end of one hour you will not you will not have the motivation to go back to your book because you are at the half of the movie and you you would never know what what the next scene will be so plan your breaks first you have a break of one hour you plan what to do in the in those one, in that one hour and planning your break is the first step which you will do <clears throat> now you have planned your breaks the other time you are going to study as i have already said you divide your 24 hours as 8 hours 8 hours and 8 hours 8 hours of sleep 8 hours of uh, enjoyment and 8 hours of study so the next thing is you must decide whether you are a morning person or whether you are you are a evening and night person there are only two kinds see if you are a morning person it's like you wake up early in the morning around 5 o'clock or even 4 o'clock or maybe 6 o'clock uh, and you go to sleep by 9 or 10 at night if you are a evening person it's like you you wake up at around 8 or 9 o'clock and then you go to sleep by, by around 12 or 1 o'clock i am basically a kind of a evening person or night person because i lo- i love to have morning sleeps so your timetable will depend on what type of person you are so if you are a morning person uh, i suggest you to finish 5 and a half hours of reading within 2:30 uh, what i mean to say is if you are waking up at 6 and you have you have till 2:30 that is around 6 hours and uh, another 8 and a half hours in those 8 and a half hours you must be reading around 5 and a half hours and after 2:30 in the afternoon you will have to cover up whatever is left if you are reading for 8 hours it is going to be 2 and a half hours left so you will, you must read around 2 and a half hours in the evening time so that's how it is so if you are waking up at 6 o'clock you must finish around 5 and a half hours of reading within 2:30 that's the basic limit and i am damn sure that this will work if you are not going up to that mark you are not going to finish 8 hours at the end of the day because it's what it is it is the most lenient time table which you could have so coming to the evening person uh, like if you are waking up at around 8 o'clock or even 9 o'clock you must finish around 3 and a half hours of reading within 2:30 so uh, do you get my point like with the 2:30 is the basic uh, is the 2:30 is the limit for both of you uh if, if, whether if you are a morning person or a evening person if you are a morning person you must be finishing 5 and a half hours of reading within 2:30 and uh, for a evening person you must be finishing around 3 and a half hours of study time within 2:30 so let's come to the evening person more precisely you have finished 3 and a half hours of reading from the from the morning you have you have woken up and you have another 5 and a half hours to read or 4 and a half hours to read so after 2:30 whatever time you feel comfortable you have from 2:30 to night 1 o'clock or you can extend up to 1:30 also if you are a night person so in that time in that 8 hours you will be finishing off these 4 hours so it's not like nobody can be a day person uh, you cannot read all day long because you will definitely need breaks and your brain needs breaks as well so this is what happens uh, either you choose your mornings or you choose your nights uh, there are people who are, who whom i know who read for around uh, 12 hours or 13 hours a day and this does not apply to them because they have their books any time in their hand but basically you have to choose between morning and evening and that's the second point i would like to say i just have my notes uh, in at the side so that i can get a clear idea of what i should say to to you so the next point is time tracking <coughs> how to track my study time 
tracking your study time is a very vital thing and at the start of the preparation you can app uh, you can use apps like uh, like pomodoro timer or forest and there are millions of apps uh, left on the play store you choose which uh, whichever suits for you and you track your time like you start your time and then stick on to one hour and then uh, and then you record it as i have studied for one hour and then uh, second hour you uh, there there'll be a timer like start and stop button so it actually will calculate how much time you have read and at the end of the day you can calculate okay i have targeted for around 8 hours okay i have studied for 7 hours like that so that's what time tracking does and time tracking will actually increase your increase your spirit like if you are reading for 8 hours today and the next day you will kind of feel like okay today i am not so i am not so feeling so good so let uh, let me let me decrease my time or let me increase my time i am feeling well so that kind of adjustments you can do and you can be sure that yes i am working hard i am i am being productive that's a that's a proof uh, proof to your preparation if you are not tracking your time it will be like uh, uh, you will not be sure like wh- or what are you doing am i doing it right or am i it doing it sufficiently you can have that uh, you can have that self confidence that okay something i am doing I, i may get the reward of this so time tracking is very essential <clears throat> and the next thing is when you plan your time table i am very sure that the time table you plan on the first time will not be the same on the next month your time table will frequently change because the pattern you read for a neat em days is like the first 3 uh, to 4 months you will be mainly focusing on new topics and new subjects like that for four months you will be reading some other topics some other subjects and then again uh, it will go to revision parts and uh, and something like that so your time table can, will not be the same all throughout but you make your initial time table uh, stick on to that uh, whatever happens uh, see if you are planning for 8 hours and you are reading for 7 and a half to 6 and a half hours it's more than enough you need not accomplish 8 hours every time and it's almost impossible because we are humans we are not machines to be doing what all we we think we have a lot of distractions and things like that and it all comes to account so that's it and then uh the distraction part i would like to stress upon this see uh there is a rule called <coughs> the 30 second rule when you are waking up in the morning you will never feel like taking a book even if you are a very good student you will not feel like you must take your book and read because it is a monotony and you don't have much of interest in it unless people a uh, few people really have interest and they can read for long hours and if you are a average person you you will not feel so impressed to take your book so what you do is you take your book read for 30 seconds just 30 seconds and after 30 seconds there is a high possibility that you will continue reading if you get that <coughs> if you get that kind of spirit you keep moving on to it because the start is always the toughest part so uh, once you took your once you take your book in your hand it's uh, it, the the path is always going north so that's the thing and then uh, the time schedule changes which i uh, which i told already uh, you must create a time table which best suits you uh, i will give my time table here i will post it somewhere around here now uh, this is my time table you can see it you can follow it if you want but i have made other time tables also so this is my second time table and uh, this is my third time table so you have seen that i have made around three time tables for me and at the end i did not have any time tables because i felt like i have to read for around 9 hours and 10 hours and i don't even have time to look at my time tables anymore and that that will be the situation so you need not get afraid like should i have to stick to the time table the basic rule is <coughs> make your week more productive see how much time have you planned to read if you have planned to read around 6 hours per day the productivity hours of your week will be around 42 hours 42 hours of productivity because there are 7 days in a week if you are taking a off day the productivity will be around 36 hours so at the end of the week from sunday to sunday you must have finished 36 hours and that is the single most goal which you have to focus on see on monday you will be getting very very overwhelmed like i am going to read for 10 hours a day and the next day even if you read 2 hours it's normally 6 hours a day and that's good and on a tuesday you go you go without reading and on thursday you read for again around 10 hours though the, so that is 16 hours so you must balance your day so that you cannot read 6 hours every day or 8 hours every day you must balance that so that the total productivity hours is the same as the total of your study uh, study hours i mean to say if you are planning for 8 hours a day 
the total productivity is 56 hours you can divide that 56 hours as either as 888 or 910 or uh, or even 712 anything you read but it's necessary that you read at least 3 to 4 hours every day and that's a basic essential thing uh, so it's uh, it's not like I am going to read 8 hours every day and I'm stressing upon this because it's very tough to be consistent. You will you will, you will have uh, a few days you will be getting sick and a few days you will be getting uh, some other works. Uh, somewhere you will be going around things, you will be visiting your college for your degree certificates and there will be a lot of things which distract you from your process of studying and you have to be, your your timetable must be flexible. It should not be very strict. If you make it strict and, and, at, the, and, the, and at the end it will be feeling like uh, the timetable is driving you. You never, you should allow your timetable to drive you. You, you must drive your timetable. Because at the end, <coughs> whatever we do at those three hours will matter the most. Not uh, not what we, what we did all these years. So you have to maintain your anxiety as well. And uh, practice a lot of meditation. Uh, make, your, make yourself fit. Uh, go for a long walk or uh, go for a walk in your terrace. Uh, practice some aerobic exercises. Have healthy foods like that. And uh, even you can have some cra uh, craving, food cravings and go for it. And whatever you do, you make sure your dopamine level is always high. And practice your mock test, everything and like that. So there are other <coughs> there are other things like how to study in the study time as well. Uh, I'm not getting it more seriously. You just have to listen to my videos and uh, just take what all you can, uh, you, you will need. You need not pause the video and look like I have to follow this. It's not like that. I'm just giving you an opinion. You can try what works for you and you can, you can leave off which, which won't. So the next video will be about the study techniques. The best study techniques in the world are just two things which is the Pomodoro technique and the flow state technique. And the most commonly used but not so famous is the SQR3 technique. But the SQR3 is mostly related to the school, uh, school related uh, exams uh, which, uh, which will require a lot of memorizing etc. So we will be focusing on Pomodoro and flow state. So let me give a short intro on Pomodoro and flow state. Uh, th still there are a lot of videos on YouTube. Pomodoro is like you divide your study time in short chunks like 25 minutes of study, 5 minutes of rest, 25 minutes of study, 5 minutes of rest, 25 minutes of study, 5 minutes of rest and the cycle goes on till you finish 2 hours and then you'll take a long break. That is Pomodoro. And flow state is like you start your preparation, you read uh, you read to the point that you feel very very lazy you close off your book and then you come back and then again you read for a, for a certain period of time you track what all time you read uh, whichever time you uh, which you are, which you have read and at the end of the week you will have a timetable like uh, so I, this is my pattern it's not like uh, one hour one hour break one hour it won't work in, in flow state flow state is like whenever time uh, whenever you get time you can read it and you have to track that because everyone everyone of us will have a rhythm uh, and you have to find finding the rhythm is what flow state means simply it's not as simple as this so in the next following video we'll be discussing a lot more on that and uh, i'm thankful for everyone who is following me and uh, uh, for your replies on me on my instagram page um, and i'm sure that this will help you a lot uh, don't take this too seriously you have your opinions you have your methods try them out uh, this is just a this is just a suggestion that uh, I, have, I have did this and uh, I have reached here and I, this this worked for me simply that's what I want to share with you so if you find this video useful please give me a like and a subscribe as well and do share it with your friends uh, this is applicable for almost every examination uh, which is in the multiple choice uh, which has which is as a multiple choice uh, question examination so that's it for this video and uh, thank you.